Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GameJube, and welcome back to our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series. So in today's video, we'll be doing something a little different. In this video, we'll be recapping the story and characters from our first concept restaurant, the Freddy Fazbear Jungle Party Pizzeria. So recently, we've had some new subscribers join the channel. So this is a great way to get caught up with the previous videos. Or if you're a long time viewer, then have fun reliving all the previous character concept moments. So as always, I will just state that everything in these videos is purely fan-made. So all the characters and the restaurant are our own creation, and they're not really linked with the overall FNAF universe and FNAF lore. These are just a creepy cool story that we get to tell, and we hope you enjoy the recap. And lastly, before we start today's video, do be sure to subscribe to GameTube as it helps out a lot and it is greatly appreciated. Alrighty, well, let's get into the recap of the Freddy Fazbear jungle-themed pizzeria. So our story recap starts off at the Freddy Fazbear Jungle Party themed pizzeria. Hence the name, this was a jungle themed Freddy Fazbear establishment that contained a whole host of jungle themed animatronic characters. And for the first character we have, Lester the Lizard. Lester was originally modelled after an iguana. But Fazbear Entertainment opted to just call them a lizard after concerns that children wouldn't be too familiar with an iguana. As for Lester's character traits and role up on stage, he was the drummer in the Fazbear Jungle Party Band. He would hold two oversized drumsticks and stand in front of the drum set. Lester would occasionally sing with his large jaws opening and closing. Sometimes Lester's voice box would malfunction and frighten some of the children. His main body, arms and legs were made up of a fuzzy material that contained soft stuffing. Underneath all the soft padding was of course their cold metal endoskeleton. Their head and tail was also made of a dense foam rubber. As for their teeth, they too were seemingly harmless, being made of a flexible rubber vinyl. Over time, their soft material arms and bodies started to tear and become awfully stained due to the oil leaks from the metal joints. After a while, Lester had to be decommissioned on account of his frightening appearance and more specifically the incident that took place. Now and then, misbehaving children would stick their arms inside of Lester's mouth as a dare. The kids felt no pain as the flexible rubber teeth were lightly pressed down on their arms as they sang. But over time, the flexible rubber teeth in their mouth became tough and rigid. On one tragic day, a misbehaving child stuck their arm inside of Lester's mouth as a dare, when all of a sudden, Lester's jaw slammed shut. The Lester the Lizard animatronic was having a critical malfunction and all the Fazbear employees tried to desperately open his jaw. But they stayed clamped shut on the poor child's arm. The employees had to evacuate the pizzeria and shut off the power to the whole facility. They eventually got them open and the child recovered in hospital. Fazbear Entertainment decided to retire Lester to ensure another tragic incident like this wouldn't happen again. The employees stored the decommissioned Lester in the repair room. But eventually they would roam around the pizzeria and terrorise the poor security guard. During the night, Lester would approach from either side of the security office. The player would be able to hear their heavy animatronic footsteps as they approach the doors. Whilst looking at the security cameras, the player can track Lester's movements. Sometimes they can catch them creepily staring at the cameras. So the player needs to survive until 6am, until they are finally safe but in doing so would definitely prove to be a challenge. So now that we've covered the character of Lester the Lizard, it's now time to move on to the next character. And that character is Penny the Panther. Penny the Panther was of course modelled after large dark jungle cats. The engineers gave her a rich dark purple scheme with bright yellow eyes. Her eyes were designed to be luminescent and glow in the dark. That was a special feature that only Penny had. 
They gave her a bright pink bow and her rosy red cheeks to give her much of a brighter and jollier look. Just like Lester, Penny's head was made up of a dense foam rubber. So for Penny's role up on stage, she was the main vocalist of the Fazbear Jungle Band. Penny was considered to be one of the crowd favourites. All the children loved Penny and Fazbear Entertainment made a great profit on all of her merch. As time went on, Penny's happy and inviting appearance slowly turned into something much more sinister. Penny started to become worn and stained due to the low maintenance and poor repairs. At the time, a lot of these delicate animatronics were new to the employees and they didn't really know how to take care of them. Little did they know that Penny's exposed mechanics and wires would lead to a troublesome event. On one unfortunate day, Penny had a major malfunction during one of her shows, and it was definitely a frightening experience for all the children. Whilst up on stage, Penny was singing one of her songs when all of a sudden, the motor that powered her mouth went into overdrive. A sudden surge of power caused her bottom jaw to move up and down at a rapid pace. The Fazbear employees couldn't cut the power supply, otherwise they'd risk the other characters malfunctioning as well. With all the friction from the rapid mouth movement, the fabric in Penny's bottom jaw ripped and shredded away. This of course revealed her frightening sharp metal jaw. The motor eventually burnt out and the employees could eventually power her down. This specific malfunction was known by the employees as the Chatterbox Incident. The manager called the security guard and explained to them what has happened. Fazbear Entertainment was sending a replacement jaw in a couple of days. But unfortunately, Penny thought the security guard was hiding her old jaw plate cover from her. So Penny was willing to take back her imaginary jaw from the guard no matter what. So throughout the night, Penny would make her way towards the security office. The player would know that Penny was at the door whenever they would see her bright eyes in the darkness. Sometimes her eyes wouldn't be shining and the player would have to look very closely to see if she was there or not. Penny's gameplay mechanic would definitely add an extra layer of stress that's for sure. So now let's move on to our third character at the Freddy Fazbear Jungle Pizzeria. This third character was Gordo the Gorilla. The Fazbear Entertainment Engineers of course designed Gordo after a gorilla. They originally went with a more natural looking colour scheme, but then opted for a more colourful look to fit the Fazbear aesthetic. Gordo's role up on stage was that of the saxophonist. Alongside Lester and his drums and Penny and her voice, Gordo would also be on stage playing the saxophone. The saxophone they were holding was a fake plastic one. Since Gordo was a saxophone player, they tried to play around with a more jazz orientated outfit for them. Gordo was one of the more bulkier animatronics at Fazbear Entertainment. Gordo's forearms were larger than any of the other characters and they had to be filled out with extra thick heavy foam rubber. This meant that their endoskeleton was able to hold much more weight. They were fitted with stronger hydraulics on all of their joints and even their jaws. Considering Gordo has all this significant power, they had a strange obsession with crushing objects. Gordo would tend to wander around and crush anything they wanted. On one unfortunate night, Gordo decided to crush his own saxophone in his jaws. He managed to do it, but also swallowed the whole saxophone. Eventually, the hard plastic saxophone tore its way through Gordo's stomach, leaving a large hole with multiple wires dangling out. Disappointed that they weren't able to crush the saxophone into smaller pieces, they broke into the repair room and gave themselves an upgrade. They glued multiple spare teeth into their mouth that gave them the ability to crush objects into many more pieces. So with Gordo's brand new teeth, they've been raring to test them out again. 
Unfortunately for the security guard, they're the one that they want to try them out on. So throughout the night, Gordo proved to be one of the toughest characters to deal with. They had multiple abilities like being able to smash security cameras and holding doors just before they close. If the player accidentally tears one of Gordo's arms off, then they'd be dealing with a much more angrier and tougher gorilla. Gordo would definitely prove to be quite the challenge for the player, that's for sure. So now we come to the fourth Jungle Band member, and that character is Parker the Parrot. Parker the Parrot is a brightly coloured avian animatronic. The type of parrot Parker was modelled after was that of the Red Macaw. The bird's naturally beautiful red, yellow, green and blue colour scheme would be perfect for a Freddy Fazbear animatronic. Parker was one of the rare Fazbear animatronics that didn't have any hands. The engineers instead went with the large extended feathers to showcase more of Parker's bright, vibrant colours. They would still be able to hold certain objects as long as they were metal. Throughout their feathers were many miniature magnets that would attach the metal objects. So Parker's role up on stage was that of the Maraca player. Another key feature of Parker was their voice box. They had built into their endoskeleton a special microphone and speaker system. This meant, just like an actual parrot, they could repeat anything that was said to them in their funny parrot voice. Parker was also able to join families when they were singing happy birthday at their separate tables. One day, while singing happy birthday with the guests, one of the candles on the cake accidentally caught on one of Parker's feathers. Parker's synthetic feathers went up in flames immediately. All the children began to scream in fear as the large burning animatronic flailed back and forth. Eventually all the customers were evacuated and Parker's flaming body was extinguished. Alongside with their burnt body, Parker's recording box was also severely damaged by the fire as well. It could no longer record any new audio. All it could do was play back the last audio that it recorded. Unfortunately, the last recording was that of the eerie screams of the children who saw him burning. The engineers decided to mute their voice box to avoid them letting out any unnecessary screams. But some of the workers say they can still hear the screams here and there. Parker began to develop a great fear of candles and flame. The pizzeria had to ban all candles off birthday cakes due to Parker violently running over and knocking the cakes to the ground to put out the flame. This also meant employees weren't allowed to have lighters on them and smoke cigarettes on the premises. One night after the security guard flicked their finished cigarette at Parker, they triggered a sense of panic in them. Parker saw the security guard as a giant candle that needed to be extinguished. Throughout the night, Parker would terrorise the player. They would appear frequently from either side of the security office. The player was able to anger Parker with the lighter and cause them to charge into the door and knock them out for a period of time. But if they failed to pull off this lighter trick, then it wouldn't really end well for them. So now we come to the final character at the Freddy Fazbear Jungle Pizzeria, and this character is Leroy the Lion. Leroy, of course, was the lion character in the Freddy Fazbear Jungle Crew. Although he didn't join his other jungle friends up on stage, in the early days of the Jungle Pizzeria, there used to be the Arcade Cave. Instead of being up on stage, Leroy would be in the Arcade Cave. He'd have his own little stage where he would stand and watch all the guests play their games. They didn't have many arcade machines, only about six or seven. Leroy would greet all the guests as they entered the arcade. Leroy also had an unlikely best friend. This best friend was Hank the security guard. Every night Hank was always there to greet Leroy. Out of all the animatronics, Leroy was Hank's favourite. 
After hours when it was quiet, Hank would always be hanging out in the arcade cave playing games. Most times, Hank would put his hat on Leroy whilst he played. He always bought Leroy an extra donut whenever he bought over coffee. Of course, Hank would eat this donut as well, but it was always a fun little novelty that the two shared. Hank would always sit next to Leroy and tell him about his day. Leroy never talked back of course, but Hank always said he was just a good listener. So one night, the Jungle Pizzeria held an arcade gaming tournament. The night was a success. They had hundreds of guests throughout the night emptying their pockets into the machines. Thousands of dollar bills and even more quarters and coins were stored away in the arcade machines that night. These were pretty old machines and it wouldn't take much to pry them open and obtain the thousands of dollars inside. And that's exactly what a group of troubled teenagers decided to do. On that unfortunate night, Hank was once again playing games whilst Leroy watched. The teenagers managed to sneak into the pizzeria and make their way to the arcade cave. But they didn't realise the security guard would be in the arcade. One thing led to another and a struggle ensued. After threatening to call the police, one of the teens struck Hank with a baseball bat. They then continued to kick Hank as he laid there on the ground. Leroy just stood there and watched his best friend be unmercifully beaten up by these heartless teens. As the teens continued to rob the arcade, they didn't realise the shadowy figure behind them. It was Leroy, and he wasn't a happy lion. The arcade doors closed, and what happened after that was a mystery to everyone else. In the morning, the police arrived at the scene to an unconscious Hank, a severely damaged Leroy, and four knocked out teenagers lying on the ground. The pizzeria deemed Leroy out of order and stored him in the repair room, and they never saw Hank again. Months later, the pizzeria hired a new security officer named Mike. Unfortunately, they didn't have a uniform his size, so he just had to make do with Hank's old uniform. This managed to fool Leroy into thinking that Hank had returned. Leroy wanted to make sure that no one would ever hurt Hank again. They wanted to protect them, but Leroy's idea of protection was not exactly safe. Leroy planned to capture the new Hank and stuff them into an animatronic suit. So throughout the night, Leroy would try to capture the player. The player had to try their best to keep Leroy out of the office. But, like all the other characters at Jungle Pizzeria, this would prove to be quite the tough task. So, that covers all the characters and the story recap for the Freddy Fazbear Jungle Pizzeria. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing, as it helps out a lot and it is greatly appreciated. Also, in the comment section down below, be sure to let us know what jungle-themed character was your favourite. Alrighty, well, in the next video, I'll catch you later. Bye.